where I live, I live on a very typical London high street, which is mostly Starbucks, you know. And uh, when I walk down to the metro, I used to pass, it's not there anymore, but one of those massage parlours which have Venetian blinds in the window so you can't see in. And um, we always used to make jokes about it in our family and make pretend tickets, you know, for parliament things. Just, just for a joke. And then when I started working with Helen Bamber, one of the people that I met first was a survivor of trafficking called Elena, and um, she had been working there mm. as I'd been walking past. Mm -hmm. So that literally between me and that pane of glass was a woman who had been sold in Moldova. She was there on my high street. That's what really gets you, just goes, <coughs> you know, just smacks you mm. into wakefulness and you go, oh, because somehow I think we think that it's all happening in the flesh pots of somewhere. We're not quite sure where, but actually it's in very ordinary places. In it's our hidden country, in plain sight. It's hidden in plain sight in suburbia mm. often. Um, and, and as Kat and I were saying this morning, there's a huge debate about prostitution full stop, which is a very interesting and important debate, mostly, I think, to do with our relationship with sex, yeah. um, both male and female. It's, it, it's a very profound, uh, been going on for, you know, and it's something that, that, that will change. I think that'll take generations, but it's, it's, f it's fascinating. But the point is, the customer doesn't care whether the woman that they have gone to pay for is legal or illegal. It's not the point. Hmm. Um, although my friend who had been sold, she said, I mean, her, her experiences were so strikingly foul. Um, and she is so um, shockingly whole after, partly to do with the fact that every person who heard her story helped to heal her. Mm -hmm. That's why I say, go and listen and make people find out, even though it's awful. Because as with the torture victim who loses their voice twice, first during torture and then next, because no one wants to hear about what's been done to them. No one wants to hear that. It's horrible. Like, you came on a Saturday morning to listen to something very horrible that's very painful that you don't necessarily want to carry around with you all weekend, but you've come. And that's, that's our job, and certainly our job as communicators, um, is, to, is to communicate this first. And then you find out how people react. This is the interesting thing. I mean, it's finding out what people think about it. Of course, we all feel what we feel. Um, and when we sat in Trafalgar Square and in Vienna with Journey, you know, people come through the containers and they come out and they have been given a kind of palimpsest of what it might have be like for them. And it's very interesting, their response, their fear, their but their desire to act. Mm. Again, it's a, an issue I think that needs to be taken to the streets. I think that's very important. You can't, you can't describe it otherwise. You must be with people and talk to them face to face. It's too hard otherwise.